Well, hi there, Robin here, and today we've got the Alto TS-415. Yes, finally, after a year, I've gotten it. And it's very impressive. Uh, really nice. A couple of things we do want to talk about is, one, welcome to the new showroom. Uh, this is different. It's not the studio. This is not the old showroom that I used to have. This is a brand new place that we've got. Uh, it's more for warehousing and testing and setting people up with what they need. And today is definitely the speaker. We've gotten it a while back, about two, three weeks ago. We were busy renovating this place, so uh, I had to do other things. But I did get a chance to play it. I haven't even gotten all of the stock in yet. The place is still pretty empty. But we do have these, and we have been playing around with them. And I think it's really cool, all the things we can talk about when we get to the speaker. So all the things maybe we might have been hoping we had, but we were missing on the TS-315, all have been resolved on this particular model right here. Now, Bluetooth with a Bluetooth app. Those are two different features, by the way. So Bluetooth is for pairing up with your music, getting that running. The Bluetooth app is for setting it up, getting it working on your actual phone or tablet. It allows you to set this all up front of house and not have to get behind. Now, also, very important, it allows you to control multiple speakers all at the same time. So those are really nice features. Now, the nice thing is also that cosmetically in the front, this looks almost identical to what you were seeing before with the TS-215 and the TS-315. So design look match. So if you had one and you were getting a second one or you needed extra and you just wanted them all to look the same, that's gonna happen. But that is where the similarities stop. So yes, ooh, look at that pretty front. But the rest of it, definitely different. One, uh, you're going to notice before we even spin this thing around, if it was sitting on an actual floor or on a table or on a shelf or anything like that, you wouldn't notice this. But when you put it on a pole mount, the actual pole is lined up with the side of the actual logo, not the center. So uh, straight on, it looks a little skewed, like something's not right there. But that's okay. They did that to balance the whole load out. Why? Because of the box. Now, as the box goes, it has a brand new design shape to it. So very important. It takes into all considerations of a great engineered product. So it's maximizing the strength and rigidity of the box. So this way we get a good solid box out of the unit. But they've also figured out how to lighten the load. It's got ribs inside of it now which you can almost, almost tell by looking at the profile of this. You can almost feel it. If you, if you look for them, you can feel it through the actual material. There's a body structure difference to this large size. It also has a curve to it now. It's not straight. Bit of a curve, kind of like a bridge, an arc. This way it's giving it some rigidity. Now that's on this side here. Now, if so we spin it around and look at the... So now when we spin it around and take a look at this side, what we're going to notice is that our handle placement has gotten a little bit larger, which is kind of cool. Uh, the overall drop-in recessed design is still there, but more importantly, the actual wedge surface area, this point here, is larger than it was before. This allows the amplifier to actually have better freedom. The power cord has been moved to the opposite side of the wedge, again, improving the actual conveniences and you know how the machine's going to work because before the power cord was very close to the floor when you used it as a wedge and it was a little problematic now that's fixed good thing also this offsets the entire box internally because we've got a smaller sheltered area here and a larger surface area here and the handles top and bottom very nice i always like when they put handles on the top and the bottom because it makes it a lot easier to get it on the pole now amazingly enough Besides increasing the power by about, you know, 15%, 20%, they've also managed to strip down some weight off of it. So again, very light. The engineering and design and amplifiers and power supplies and all this technology just keeps getting better. And at the same time, providing us better overall loudness and performance. So that's really what's going on here. So don't think they're cheaping out on anything when it comes to that. Now we buy and sell Alto here. So we don't just, you know, we don't just have it here pretty for a display. 
So there's things I look at and make sure that, you know, when somebody comes to me, is it going to be the right speaker for them? And I look at these things. So I'm not just like, ooh, I bought it. I like it. Yay. It's got to do more than that. And it does. And before we get into the more than that part, I'm going to... Because the speaker is off-centered, which is kind of odd again, I'll, you know, it's not for here or there. It's not, you know, like it's going to stop you from buying it. Don't get me wrong. But if it's loose on an actual shelf bracket, so if it's loose on a pole bracket, it tends to lean over to one side a little bit. Again, the engineers know what they're talking about. So... The big advancements that I like, besides the fact they've got Bluetooth and a Bluetooth app, remember, those are two different things, and this has both of them, is that they've actually switched it from a gradual gain and transition. So this means from an actual volume that's based on line input transitioning into a mic input, which can be problematic for people who aren't used to that. This has gone to a traditional line switch microphone. Very important. So we're going to cover how that looks in the back, but that's a big, big plus for me on the speaker. So what I'm doing for you right now is I'm going to throw the actual app screen on so you can see it right now. Now, this is important. This is great. Now, one of the key things that I like is what you're looking at right now. You're seeing two speakers on my actual screen, which again, hopefully is right up here for you. And what you're seeing is the fact that I have one a TS-415 and a TS-410 hooked up at the same time wirelessly ready to play music. Also, I can then go into individual speakers and I can set either the pre-selected, you know, DJ setting, live music setting, or flat, but I can also make a custom setting as well. So let, let's see how that works. So I go in, press, tap on the EQ button functionality there. This is going to be on there. Now, the speaker that we're talking about right now, I think we're still on the TS-412. So here on the app, when we actually go to the master EQ settings, we now have some options. So what I'm gonna to wanna to do is slide down. I can see that I can either turn the EQ off, I can have it in DJ mode, I can have it on live performance, or I can have it in custom. If I press custom, now what's gonna happen is certain buttons are gonna to start to light up. And what that means is I can select the actual one through six option, which is gonna place me on the actual EQ spectrum there. And then I can adjust the center frequency what I want to deal with here. And then I can adjust the Q value, which is going to be the arc, the wave. And then I can either increase it or I can decrease it just like that. Look at that. I can make it go up and down just by doing that, which is very, very cool. Now I can go through and do that across the whole board. You can test it as many different ways. You can save a whole bunch of different settings. And when you're ready, you can just upload it. There's an upload button right there. So what we'll do is we'll just drop that down. So we'll put that down there. Now I can choose number, let's say five, and I'm gonna move that over to, uh, let's say a thousand. And then I'm going to increase that by two. And again, watch, I'm gonna change the Q value and the Q value is gonna change how that, look how tight that gets, or I can make it wider. And it even shows you the overlap. How does this affect any other setting I've done? So that's all there for you. And again, you just hit that upload and it will upload to the speaker. It won't upload until you do that. This gives you great toys to play with the front of the house. So if you're at home, you can do whatever you want. You can have you've got a studio, you can play around with it, you can practice with it. Or you can set it up for different bars, restaurants, clubs. If you play, you use it for DJ services at halls, you can set it up for different halls and then save those settings. So this way when you go back, boom, just upload it and you're done. These are good things. And again, very fun to use. So again, I can go right back to DJ. No worries, I didn't change anything. It's just gonna go right back to that setting shows it on the back of the speaker, you're good to go. That's fun. Now, if you want, you can also go, let's get back to the main screen. You can also go to your pairing options. Now see here, we're gonna see three speakers that I have already. It's that simple. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn on the last speaker that we have here that's not on the list, and that is gonna be the TS-408. And then we'll see how that comes up. So we'll come over here, power that up. So I've just powered it on. And while it's powering on, it is going to be available in the app. So now I'm going to press the plus button at the bottom here. Let's see if it scans and finds it. If not, I may have to press that button on the back, but it's probably going to find it here. Let's see. From practice, it's worked. Oh, look, it's wants to add scene. It says it right on top, the Alto TS-408. Add that bad boy. Yes, we want it. 
all done. Now we have four speakers. Each one has its own color dot. Well, two of them are the same, so we're gonna change that. Let's go to the TS408. Let's give that dot a different color because you know what? It needs to be a different color. We give that yellow. And there we go. So now they're all a different color. And again, we can adjust these speakers. We can use this ability to pair off to it because now once we're in charge, we can actually get in there, pair off to it. So that's good. You can do it from the back, but you can also do it right from the app once you have it going. Also, you can easily make this linkable. So if I go back to the main speaker, so I'm going to press that speaker on the top, which is going to give me my list of all my speakers. And now I'm going to press the TS-415. It's going to connect to this guy here. So now that we've connected to the TS-415, I'm going to press the stereo remote connection and I'm going to begin a connection to a second speaker. Now notice my list now, it's only showing three options. We're going to go to the TS-412. I'm going to press that button there. Now it's asking me to tap to link the two together. Now it's going to beep like crazy. It's going to be loud. It's going to be stupid loud, full volume loud, so be prepared. It's connecting there now. It's connected there. So now the two speakers are now connected together. That is stupid loud. That's the one thing I don't like. I don't like stupid loud and that's stupid loud. And there we go. That part is done. That's how easy these two are to play around with to work. Now, I'm not going to want to go and do a professional job and have it linked together like this for DJing purposes. This is great for backyard party setups. If you're sending a customer home on a rental, this is a good way to go. If you're setting up and leaving it, or if you're using it for personal use, if you're in a band or something, and you just want to be able to play some music while you're not on stage, this is a good way to go. That being said, one thing you can't do, you can't mix out from a Bluetooth connection through the mix out cable here and have it run a subwoofer. It won't do that. It just doesn't happen. It's not an option. So unfortunately, that's something you can't do with that. So you're going to have to have a traditional hookup, which I'd recommend anyways. You should have a mixer and you're better off to put, if you're doing this professionally and you do want to have Bluetooth connectivity and you want to have all your capabilities, use your mixer to get that happening. And if you do plug a Bluetooth total directly into the back of this, you can still do that as well. If you want reliable, stable, professional, I get paid for this job, wireless connectivity, you should be using a 2.4 wireless point-to-point -point connection, something like a Stealth connection or from Alto, that's their Stealth packages, uh, or you can get yourself a uh, X-Vibe, that sort of thing, which is all you know UHF or now more popular 2.4 gigahertz, which is not part of the Bluetooth. It's just a frequency locked in its own channel, allow you to get everything hooked up the way you want. Buttons on the back. There's no display on the speaker, so you do need to get your app, and it will run on both the Android or on iOS. So, you know, forget it. You have an iPhone, it works. If you have a tablet, it works. If you have an iPad, it works. If you have, well, whatever it is, you're good. Uh, on the back, you've got some settings. You can have the EQ off. You can have the EQ set to live or DJ. These are all good things. These are going to give you better sound. Uh, normally, I would have it off if you're using a mixing board. Very important. And it also has you subwoofer options. So you can set it for a large, a medium, or small subwoofer. 12, 15, 18 inch, that sort of thing. Uh, and really what it's doing is it's going to apply a crossover to this speaker itself, but give you that full output connection to the subwoofer. So this way you can get a little bit more volume dBs out of the speaker uh, because you've trimmed off the bass a little bit and it has a calculated crossover point depending on the size of the speaker. So this way it matches up pretty good with what's going on there. A couple of important things. I've seen a lot of not just these speakers, but previous series being mounted inside of bars and restaurants because they're very, very popular because they give an incredible quality of sound and they're affordable enough that you can mount them and leave them permanently part of a structure set up in a restaurant or a hall or a club, whatever you want to put it in. But I've seen and have been part of many of those installs. It uses an M20 bolt assembly, which are all part of this. Now, a lot of speakers in this price category or in this line of series of products tend not to have mounting brackets, proper mounting brackets capable for setting it up like that. Now this does, they use M10, which is a weight load, proper threaded bolt size. They are harder to find because they are designed for, you know, safe, secure hanging of things on the ceiling so they don't, you know, fall down. M10s, 
here on top. Makes them so you can pinch the speaker back a bit. Really, really cool. Very nice. Also, I like the handles. Rubber, solid, bolted in handles. Very nice, comfortable to use. It's got good grip to it, regardless if you've been like working really hard, disassembling all your gear, and you may be a little sweaty, or it's very hot and you become, you know, damp, that sort of thing. Outside of that, I don't have much to complain about when it comes to the speaker. I mean, I'm picking, I'm really picking at it when I go, that pole mount is off center. It's just weird. It's not a problem. It's just different. That being said, again, if you tighten up your screw, which is how you should have it, this speaker then sits straight up again, which is important. So there you go. We're going to take a minute. We're going to play some music. So this way you can have a listen to it, because maybe that's why the only reason why you're here is you want to hear this speaker. And again, the power is good. Power is good. A little bit more than before. So everything I've talked about on the older models, we're just moving up the family tree here a little bit. And I wish they actually sold both. I think there was a market for both the TS315 and the TS415, but it's not. And very important to note is that I know over the last couple of years, the prices of everything has gone up. Same model, same series, same type of product, just cost more. We've seen the price go up two, three, four times, depending on the manufacturer. Also hung in there with the TS315 when it came to prices. They did not jack that product up. And when they did come out with the TS415, yes, it was more expensive. But unlike a lot of other manufacturers, the price they ask for this is they're giving you a whole bunch of new features with it. And they've increased the power performance and reduced the weight load. All these things are big pluses. And they're asking just a little bit more for the product. Where, like I said, other brands I won't mention, like the ZLX, it's gone up like, I think, three times. It's gone up at least twice, if not three times. It's the same product as before. It's just more expensive. Now, I know inflation's, don't get me wrong, there's a lot of, you know, legitimate, it costs more to get it here, it costs more to get it in your hands, reasons, I understand that, I'm not taking that away. But in this particular case, they're actually giving you more speaker for the money. That's why I like Alto. That's why we brought it in. The first, first brand, first call I made. We're opening up a showroom. I need your product. And it showed up. Now, unfortunately, we don't have all the subwoofers. So once we start doing the other videos, we'll be getting the speakers. We only have the TS-18. And yes, the TS-18 is the new subwoofer. It's not called a TS-418. And I'll cover that when we do the subwoofer because it's meant to be a subwoofer that people can buy for anything. We don't need to be very, we don't need to pigeonhole the subwoofer with this particular speaker, because that's not true. It should not be part of this series. It's part of any series, any brand you have. There you go. As we get into the other models, I'll talk about some of the quirks that I think are in the speaker, but that's not a big deal. And, you know, again, I'm just going to be picky about it. For now, let's take a listen to it, and we'll call it a wrap after that. So I'm glad you made it to this point in the video. I appreciate that. Here's the audio. And don't forget, like, comment, and subscribe. I know I wasn't there for a while to answer those comments because we weren't, you know, doing much. But we are back now. I will look at those comments. I will help you out as best as I can. And I'll even do some live shows for you. For now, let's take a listen to it. Remember, it's still important to subscribe, right? If you haven't subscribed, yes. If, if you have, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Stay subscribed. There's always new stuff coming. Let's take a listen to it. Enough of me talking.
So there we are. Finished with this one today. I'd like to say thanks for watching. Glad you're way at the end of this video. I appreciate that. This is YouTube. You never know what you're going to find out. Uh, you're also going to know, hey, remember, we don't get sponsored by these guys. You watching, it's all what it's about. These product links will be available down below for you. So please help me out by using those links. That's just me. If you're in Canada, by all means, you can shop our banners right there at the bottom. You can see all the other stuff we have. And for now, I say thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye for now.